my friends. Welcome back. You know what? We're moving on. Man, we're knocking these out, aren't we? We're on the next chapter. We're on stress transformation. Oh, I'm feeling a little stressed at this point in the semester, aren't you? I hope that I can take a little bit of the stress off you with this lesson, okay? So what we're talking about in this chapter is stress transformations. One of the things that I need you to, we already talked about stress, right? Talked about normal stress, talked about shear stress, okay? We're going to do a lot of things in this chapter with this guy right here. This is called a stress element. And all this is, is a little, a little piece of material. Like if I want to know what's the stress on my board, I'm going to take this little bitty piece of material right here and I'm going to look at it and see what stress is on there, right? This is that little piece of material just blown up. So what it has, it has three things on it. It has a stress in the x direction, which we call sigma x, okay? It has a stress up here in the y direction, which we call, guess what, sigma y. And then it has this guy right here, which is called tau xy. So if normal stress, right, shear stress, or just normal stress, sigma stress, goes this way, right? Shear stress is always perpendicular to that, isn't it? Okay, that's this guy. Now the way we do shear stress is this. We look at this X face, okay? This guy right here rotates. We think about this guy right here. He would rotate that element, what? Clockwise. Just think about moments, right? A clockwise moment is what? Positive, right? So anytime this, no, the uh, shear stress goes to this corner, it's positive if it goes to this corner down here, that X face would be negative. But you can just think about it like this way. Which way does he make me rotate? He rotates me uh, counterclockwise. That's positive. Clockwise is negative, right? Okay. Well, how come these guys go together at this corner and together at that corner? If the shear stress didn't go in opposite directions, if, it went, if this one went up and that one went this way, then that little element would be spinning, right? Is my little stress element, my little piece of material on the board, is it spinning? No. So if I have something that rotates me counterclockwise, I gotta immediately have something that rotates me clockwise. And same thing, if I've got a force up, then I have to have a force down to cancel it, right? So that's what your stress element's gonna look like. This is called a stress element. Okay? And in the last chapter, when we were talking about combined loads, what did we do? We took a really complex problem, and we derived a stress element from that complex problem. Now, here is the first time that I'm going to tell you this, okay? Are you ready for this? Stress is directional. What does that mean? It means this. If I take this stress element, and I start to rotate it, let's say I just rotate it, whoop, 30 degrees clockwise, like that. It's not gonna have the same stress on it that it did here, right? Think about that 150 megapascals. As it starts getting at an angle, then it starts having two components. It has an X and a Y component. Instead of it being all in the X, now it's got an X and a Y. Well, the Y part of it turns into shear stress, right? That, what, that one component, instead of just being all normal stress, now part of it turns into shear stress. So this goes down, that goes up, everything starts to change, okay? Stress is directional. So sometimes we want to know what is stress at this angle? What is it at that angle? What is it at this angle? Okay, so think about like this, okay? I've got a big, like, holding tank, okay? And they made me go out and weld this thing together, but all I had was a strip of steel, and so what I did is I took my strips and I welded them together like this, right, into a big spiral, okay? Now, when I look at this, this um, cylinder here, if you will, this, this big holding tank, if I look at a little piece of material right here, you know, it may have a little bit of this on it. What is that called? Hoop, <laughs> there it is. It's hoop stress, right? Hoop stress. So that may be putting me in tension this way. What about this? If I'm a piece of material, I can feel the weight of all this steel above me. So I might feel 
a compression in this direction, okay? Now, um, if I have, this would be sigma x, and this would be sigma y, maybe I don't have any kind of torsion or anything like that, so I wouldn't have any shear stress whatsoever. But what about the welder comes back and he wants to know, like, how much shear stress is there that's going to tear my weld in, apart on this joint right here? So maybe I want to know what is a stress element that's aligned with the joint at some angle, right? What's going on there? Well, here I might have this, I might have this, and now I'm going to have a little shear stress around this thing also, right? So what if I wanted to know that? Can I take this guy, a stress that I know that I can calculate, I can calculate hoop stress, I can calculate weight of, of a material above me, can I take that guy, which would be like that, and go whoop, and spin it to that and be able to tell what these numbers are at a new angle? The answer is yes. The answer is right over there, okay? We'll talk about that in just a second. So let's look at this problem that we're talking about here. They gave us a stress element, okay? So we have a sigma x, a sigma y, and a tau xy, okay? Look what they say. Find sigma x prime, sigma y prime, tau xy prime for the stress element after it's rotated 60 degrees clockwise. Okay, so we're going to take that element and we're going to go like this. And so now it's going to be like this. Okay, so this, from, from here, right, we rotate it this way, 60 degrees, and so now I have a new uh, X and a Y, and I have a new tau. Now here's the deal. I drew that like that. That may not be like that. That might be like this, okay? We're in one, at one angle, this was a positive, right, which means he was in tension, but as I transform it, I might find that it switches over to compression, okay? And then same thing with tau. It, it's going up here, but over here, it may go this way. I don't know. I'm going to have to solve for it. Now, when I transform it, it's not the same as it used to be, okay? And that's what's called sigma x prime, sigma y prime, and this guy right down here, tau x y prime. So the prime is just an indication that it is a modified or changed stress element. When there's no prime, that's the given, okay? The prime is the transformed numbers, okay? So we're going to rotate it 60 degrees clockwise and get these new numbers, okay? So let's, let's talk about our equations over here. Now, I have to tell you this, okay? Confession time. This is not my favorite thing, okay? I hate it. You know why? I can't remember those equations. It's a Google world, right? You can look them up. They're on the internet. They're in your book. Hanson, are you going to derive them for us? No, I'm not, okay? I'm sure there's a derivation somewhere, but I, there they are, okay? And so these are pretty straightforward. This is sigma x prime, sigma y prime, and tau, tau xy prime. So that's what we're looking for. We're looking for this new number over here. But notice in the equation, these things here don't have primes on them. What does that mean? That they're going to come from here. Now, the equation method, a lot of my students like the equation method because it's as simple as taking those numbers, plugging them into there, put them in your calculator, and get an answer. That's really all there is to it, okay? But the problem is, is that I can't remember these equations. Now, if your teacher, your professor, lets you have an equation sheet, these equations generally are on those equation sheets. Their stress transformation equations are on the ones that are in the front of the book. I let my students have that. And so a lot of students will just use this. I want to show you a method. It's about two videos away, maybe three, but I think two, called Moore Circle, where we can do a graphical transformation. And we can get all the exact same numbers that these equations give you without having to remember the equations, okay? So if this is kind of blowing your mind, stay tuned. We're going to talk about another method where you don't have to do this, okay? I think this, my personal opinion is this is the Johnny Weeksauce method. If you're a Johnny Weeksauce student, you will just stick with the equations. But Johnny Genius student, 
he's going to do more circle. That's me. I like those. I don't like this because I can't remember them. So what happens if I put, you know, what's the difference between X and Y? Add 90 degrees to it, right? So if I put theta, uh, 90 minus theta here, right, this just changes the signs. So the only different difference between the X prime and the Y prime is this is positive, that's negative. This is positive, that's negative. That's the only difference in those two, okay? And then the tau xy equation, notice that these are sines, sines. This guy is a cosine, okay? So don't mess that up. This one's different than these two here. If you have to memorize them, I hope you don't have to memorize them because I certainly cannot remember them, okay? So I don't know what else to do other than just, let's just solve the problem that they wanted here, okay? So they want to know what is sigma x prime, y prime, tau xy prime. Let's just plug and chug. Let's get it done, okay? So the first equation, sigma x prime is equal to, okay? Sigma x plus sigma y. Well, sigma x, bam, 150. Sigma y, what? 100 divided by 2 plus, right, sigma x minus sigma y. So 150 minus 100 divided by 2 times the cosine of what? 2 times theta. Well, it said rotate it 60 degrees clockwise, okay? So what is that going to be? Clockwise is going to be what? Negative, isn't it? So it's cosine of negative 60 degrees, right? Remember that? Okay. If I rotate this way, that's positive. Here's zero degrees. Here's 90 degrees, right? There's 180, 270. So anything we rotate this way, that would be called negative, okay? So we've got to put a negative 60 in there. Are you with me on that part? Don't mess up that. Lots of parentheses here, okay? Lots of parentheses, okay? Plus tau xy plus tau xy is what? 75 times the sine. Oh, look what I did. I just put theta in there, didn't I? I got to put two theta in there. Hanson, come on, man. How about 120? Okay, sine 120, okay? Are you ready? Let's go, here we go. So what is this equal to? Sigma x prime is equal to, what is that? 250 divided by two is uh, what, 125. And then plus 150 minus 100 is 50 divided by two is 25. Cosine of negative 120, what is that? Cosine of negative 120, parentheses, ooh, negative 0.5, right? Plus 75 times the sine of negative 120 is negative 0.866, okay? So sigma x prime, what is that equal to? Let's add all that together. 125 plus 25 times negative 5 plus 75 times negative 0.866 equals. So that's 47.55. That's not how you write that. 47.55, and that's MPAs, okay? Be careful how you put that in your calculator, okay? Number next, number next, sigma y prime. Okay, let's do this guy. What's different here? Okay, first term, sigma x plus sigma y over 2. Hey, that's 125, isn't it? 125, okay? Minus... Everything is the same except it's just minus, isn't it? 25 times 0.5. Everything's the same, right? Everything. Go to the next guy. Everything's the same except minus. So minus 75 times 
866. Okay, here we go. So 125 minus, oh, that I forgot a minus there, didn't I? Whoop. Minus a minus turns into a plus, doesn't it? Plus, what's 25 times 0.5? 12.5. And then minus, oh, I did it again. So minus there isn't, minus a minus, so plus again, plus 75 times 0.866 equals 202.45 megapascals. Boop, boop, boop. What does the positive mean? What is positive? Remember, tension starts with a positive sign. So these being positive means that the X and the Y are going to be in tension. Ooh, I have that one. I just guessed him a second ago, didn't I, in compression, but he's really in tension, okay? So sigma X is uh, 47.55 megapascals, and sigma Y, 202.45 megapascals, okay? Last one, let's figure tau x, y prime. Tau x, y prime. Now there's one tricky thing here, I should have done this to you, okay? That negative is times, it's not just times x in the, in the numerator, it's times the whole thing there, okay? So it equals negative, okay, x minus y divided by two, and x was what, 150 minus 100 divided by 2 times the sine of what? Negative 120. That's not how you make negatives. Negative 120, okay? And then plus tau xy 75 times cosine negative 120, okay? Let's see if we can do that. 150 minus 100 is what? 50 divided by 2 is 25. So negative 25 times the sine of, I just did this, didn't I? Negative 120, which is, oh no, is a negative 0.866. Okay, plus 75 times negative 0.5. We remember that guy at least, don't we? So negative and a negative is a positive, so 25 times 0.866 uh, minus 75 times uh, negative 0.5. Oh, let's make that a positive 0.5. Because I already put a negative in my calculator, didn't I? Negative 15.85. Okay, so what does that mean? That means that tau, instead of being up, is going to go the other way, isn't it? Doesn't negative mean that it's going to rotate on the x face clockwise, right? So tau xy prime is going to be 15.85, but the x face is going to rotate clockwise now. It rotated counterclockwise before. Now, here's the deal. Somewhere, it went from going uphill to going downhill. So at some place, tau xy is equal to zero, isn't it? Now, in the next video, I'm going to show you how to find that guy, okay? All right, so that's all there is to this. That is how you plug and chug into these equations. How easy is it to screw this up? You forget that that negative goes there, and you put it there in front of the x. Uh, you forget the, the, the angles, if I rotate this way or negative, if I rotate that way or positive. The graphic method that I'm going to show you next time, more circle, it's going to eliminate all these errors, okay? So I hope that helps. I hope you never have to do this. All right, I'll see you on the next video.